taking God for granted? Are you taking the Lord, our God for granted? Again, we'll see that the Lord said there in the 22nd verse, he asked a question. The Lord asked, do you not fear me? Now that is a question that God was asking of the children of Israel during Jeremiah's day. And though the Lord was asking that question during Jeremiah's day, Mm -hmm. I believe that God looks at mankind today. He sees how we are. And I believe that the Lord still asks this very same question today of man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you not fear me? Do we fear the Lord today? Now, as we saw last week, there's a form of godliness that does not even bother to pretend to fear the Lord. In the book of Isaiah, God asked, shall the clay say to him who forms it, what are you making? Mm -hmm. And in the book of Jeremiah, the Lord said to the children of Israel, he said, look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, Mm -hmm. So are you in my hand, O house of Israel? Yes, yes. You see, God is in control, isn't he? All right. He has all power over us, doesn't he? Yes. The Lord is almighty, as you heard me say last week. Mm -hmm. He is sovereign over all things. This is to say that God has the power and the authority over everything. There is nothing that has power or authority over him. Yeah, we find in our world today that there is a blatant disregard of the Lord, just as we saw last week. Mm -hmm. Last week, we saw Pharaoh ask the question. He asked, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? Now, some will suggest that Pharaoh did not know of God at that time, but we saw last week that Pharaoh quickly learned of who the Lord was. And his response to the Lord was for him to harden his heart and disregard the power and the authority of the Lord. That was a blatant disregard of God. I tell you again this week that there is still a blatant disregard for the Lord in our world today, which is sad because of how God has been towards mankind. Mm -hmm. So I often wonder whether or not we truly realize just how good we have it. (laughs) I often wonder whether or not we truly realize just how good God has been to all of us. I would certainly hope that we will realize how good God has been to us and to all those who are around us as well. But sadly, we mankind, we are in such a place in our hearts that is in our mindsets Mm -hmm. that we take all that the Lord do for us and for those who are around us, we take it for granted. In our blatant disregard of the Lord, We have formed a heart that is defiant. We have formed a heart that is rebellious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, mankind's defiant and rebellious heart against the Lord is not something that started today. No, our disregard of the Lord began in the Garden of Eden. There in the Garden, the Lord commanded Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But as we know in the book of Genesis, we know that they ate from the tree anyway. Mm -hmm. And we know that after they ate from the tree, we are told in the third chapter of Genesis that their eyes were open and they realized they were naked. Mm -hmm. Now, oftentimes when we think of their nakedness, we think of their nakedness physically, but I want us to also understand here today that they were also naked spiritually as well. All right. 
words. Again, they knew now good from evil. Mm -hmm. In other words, they knew right from wrong. Yes, sir. So they were not only naked physically, but they were now naked spiritually as well. This meant that they now had no covering. They had no protection for their heart, which is to say their soul. Yeah, yeah. Their now naked heart was open to the corruption of their disregard of God's command. Right. Now, some will say that Adam sinned unknowingly in his heart. No. Yet we see in scripture that God did not excuse mm -hmm. their sin. All right. They were exiled from the garden. Yeah, yeah. And after being barred from entering back into the garden, I want you to understand there was a choice for Adam to make. Mm -hmm. Adam would have to make a choice in how he would regard the Lord from his life after the garden in Eden. Mm -hmm. Adam could choose to hold the Lord and his instructions in high regard and fear going against the Lord's instructions for him. Or Adam could choose to continue in disregarding the Lord and in disregarding the Lord's instructions for him and not fear the consequences yeah. of disregarding the Lord's instructions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe scripture indicates to us that Adam chose to fear the Lord. Yeah, yeah. I believe that scripture indicates to us that Adam chose to be obedient to the Lord and his instructions for him. Mm -hmm. You see, I believe that Adam remembered just how pleasant things were in the garden. After he was barred, after he was exiled from the garden, yeah. living the rest of his life, I believe that Adam recalled the days of being in the garden. And in remembering those days, I believe that Adam, I believe he feared disobeying. I believe he feared going up against God again yeah. and suffering being punished mm -hmm. by the Lord again. So I believe that Adam chose a path not to suffer such punishment from God again. Mm -hmm. We are told in scripture in the fifth chapter of Genesis that Adam lived a life where he was fruitful and that he multiplied just as God had commanded him to do. Yeah, yeah. Now, the question that we have to answer today, the question that all of us have to answer today is, how do we go about living our lives yeah. regarding the Lord? Mm -hmm. How do we regard the Lord in the life that we live while we are on this journey? Yeah. Do we hold the Lord and do we hold his instructions for us mm -hmm. in high regard? Or do we go about living our lives disregarding him and disregarding the instructions that he has given us. All right. All right. In other words, the question I'm asking all of us today is this, mm -hmm. do we value God? Yeah. Do we value the Lord in our lives or are we taking God for granted? Yeah. Yeah. Do we take the Lord, do we take his instructions for us do we take God for granted? Right. Now, when it comes to answering these questions, and I want you to think on these questions, and I want you to think on how you are living your life as we go through this, this sermon today. When it comes to answering these questions, let me tell you how I think about it. Let me tell you what I do. I take a moment to, to pause, and I take a moment to reflect. And I do this often. I consider, I remember all that the Lord has done for me yes, yes. in my life. Mm -hmm. How often do you do that? I hope that we do that often. All right. I not only consider what God has done for me in my life, mm -hmm. I consider what the Lord has done for me. 
I consider what God did for my dad, mm -hmm. but I also, I truly consider what the Lord has did for me and for my mom and for my brother mm -hmm. these past 10 years. All right, all right. I consider what the Lord has done for me, my mom, my brother, my sister, mm -hmm. my niece and my nephew these past 10 years. Yeah, yeah. And how we are still here today, how we are still making it. Mm -hmm. I uh, especially call to remember all that God has brought me through in just the last five years of my life. Yeah. Again, here I am today. Mm -hmm. I am making it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when I do this, I want you to understand that I begin to realize just how good I have it. Mm -hmm. I begin to realize just how good God has been to me and I realize how good God has been to all of my loved ones, including those who I have not named. I don't want anybody to be mad at me. <laughs> all right. And, and I tell you that I am very grateful for how good God has been to me yeah, yeah. and to all of my loved ones. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, and you've heard me say this in prayer before, I thank God for the things that we would consider to be small yeah, because yeah. I do not take the Lord, his works, his blessings, his instruction. I do not take God for granted. All right. All right. Good. Scripture tells us that we should often remember the Lord. Yeah. Remember what he does for us. Mm -hmm. I believe that when we take a moment to reflect on our lives and the role that God has played in our lives, I believe that we will all conclude that the Lord is good. Yeah. And I believe that we will all continue to seek his goodness. Mm -hmm. We would all continue to seek for God to continue to pour out his blessings, pour out his love onto us. So I tell you today that to me, it is honestly a scary thought to consider where I would be without God by my side. God has been a provider. He has been a healer. He's been a doctor and he's been my caretaker. And I believe that many of you will say the very same thing as well. All right. See, the Lord loves us and we cannot take his love. We cannot take his grace. We cannot take those things for granted. That's right. That's right. Yet there are those who take the Lord's love and grace for granted yeah. Yeah. by not acknowledging, by not recognizing, by not appreciating the Lord in their hearts. Now, some do this because they, as we saw last week, they believe themselves to be above the Lord. Mm -hmm. They believe themselves to be above needing God in their life. Yeah. They believe that the Lord does nothing for them. So they don't take time to appreciate all that God is actually doing for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Others, on the other hand, do this because they simply don't believe that God exists. All right. Yeah, yeah. Collectively, this group of people, they do not care for God. Mm -hmm. They do not care for his instructions. All right. They do not care for his blessings. Mm -hmm. They do not care for the Lord's marvelous works yeah, yeah. that God does on a constant basis for all of mankind. Mm -hmm. And because they do not care for the Lord, tell it, tell it. they take him for granted. Right. There are many people living in our world today that are living just as Judah was living in the fifth chapter of Jeremiah. And I want right. to direct your attention to the fifth chapter of Jeremiah here. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. At this point in time in scripture, we will see that Judah was living incredibly wicked mm -hmm. and that they were living in high disregard of God's law. All right. As the fifth chapter of Jeremiah opens, yeah, yeah. 
We will see there in the first verse that the Lord sought for anyone in Jerusalem that sought truth. This means that the Lord was seeking for anybody that sought for him because God is the truth. Now, this calls back to how the Lord sought for anybody that executed justice and truth in the northern kingdom, which was Israel at that time, but could not find anybody. Now, just as the Lord could not find anybody in the northern kingdom that executed justice and truth, Mm -hmm. we see here in scripture today that in Jerusalem, both the poor and great, we're told they're in the fourth and the fifth verse. They all together had broken the yoke. And we're told that not only did they break the yoke, but they also broke the bonds with the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Now, there is something that I want to point out here mm-hmm. about the disregard of the people of Judah right. at this point in time. Mm-hmm. Now, Judah had been given the law of God along with the rest of the children of Israel after being in bondage in Egypt. That's right. mm-hmm. Now, those who were living in Jeremiah's day, mm-hmm. they were taught the traditions And they were taught the law as well. So they knew of the Lord. Uh They knew of his instructions. Uh Yet we find that they were blatantly choosing to disregard God. They were blatantly choosing to disregard God's instructions as well. I hope that sounds familiar. Uh I want you to understand that this meant they were blatantly choosing to defy the Lord, their God, with no fear of the consequences Mm -hmm. of their actions. Mm -hmm. So again, we'll see there in my key verse Mm -hmm. that the Lord asked the people of Judah, that is the southern kingdom. He asked them, do you not? Fear me. All right. Think of God asking you that question. Mm -hmm. Think of God asking mankind that question today. Because as I said in my opening, I believe that the Lord still asks man that question today. Do you not fear me? Because of how we are living. We live wickedly today. Mm -hmm. Collectively. Mankind. Look at the sin of man. Yes. Yeah. Do you not fear me? Mm-hmm. As the Lord. I don't know about any of you, but this question from the Lord sends shivers down my spine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it kind of reminds me of when I was a little boy and I'd be acting up sometimes. Mm-hmm. And mom would say six dreaded words. <laughs> She would say, wait until your dad get home. <clears throat> to think of the Lord asking, and she just loaded up, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, she did. That was terrifying. <laughs> to think of the Lord asking someone whether or not they fear him, <laughs> it scares me for them. Because uh, I know of God's power. Yeah. I know of the Lord's power because I have studied scripture. Mm-hmm. I have faith in the word, but not only because of that, but because of through what I have witnessed of God myself. Yeah, yeah. I've witnessed what God has done for me. I've witnessed what God has done for my loved ones as well. So I know of God's power. Right. It is real. Mm-hmm. As the Lord said, we are the clay and he is the potter. Yeah. Yeah. We are in his hands. Mm-hmm. Now, to understand why God was asking this question of Judah, we have to understand what Judah was doing to defy and to rebel against the Lord. Mm-hmm. Now, let us remember that this was a people who had heard the stories of all that their forefathers had gone through in Egypt. So they will have known about how the Lord played Pharaoh and how he played all of Egypt. Mm -hmm. They would have also heard about how their forefathers were delivered from the bondage of Egypt 
and they would have heard about how God had provided for them while they were in the wilderness as well. If that wasn't enough, Mm -hmm. these people would have heard the stories about how their forefathers crossed the Jordan into the land that was the promised land, the land that they were now living in. They would have heard about how their forefathers defeated places like Jericho. Mm -hmm. They would have heard about how their forefathers defeated many great enemies that many spies believe could not be defeated. They would have heard about how they defeated those great enemies, not because of their own might, Mm -hmm. but because of the Lord's might, because of his power. All All of this they would have known through the passing down of such history. Mm -hmm. Yet we see the Lord say there in my key verse that they were defiant Mm -hmm. and that they were rebellious. We have been passed down stories of how good God has has been. I I, I knew about how good the Lord had been because of my grandparents and Mm -hmm. because of my parents, Mm -hmm. because of my uncles and and my aunts. Mm -hmm. And then I learned of of the Lord's goodness for myself. Yeah, all right. Now, if the passing down of that history was not good enough for them, they would have seen, they would have, they should have recognized that the Lord was still at work in their own lives, just as God is still at work in our lives. We'll see in this passage of scripture that the Lord first testified of his power and his authority over nature itself. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Through Jeremiah, the Lord stated there in the 22nd verse, he said, will you not tremble at my presence Mm -hmm. who have placed the sand as the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass beyond it. And though its waves tossed to and fro, yet they cannot prevail, the Lord said. Mm -hmm. He said, though they roar, yet they cannot pass over it. God was speaking about nature. Now our view on nature is that nature is powerful and that it is something that we cannot control. All right. All right. We cannot control the weather. All right. We cannot control the ocean. Mm -hmm. We can't control the wind. Mm -hmm. And we cannot control wild animals. We barely can control our pets. As wild as nature is, I want you to see this today. Mm -hmm. God is speaking of his authority and power over nature and how nature itself obeys his decree. He said that nature itself respects his command, that it respects his will by not breaking the bonds, not by not breaking the decree that he has set in place for it. All right. Now think about that for a moment. All right. If nature, as wild as we think it is, will regard the Lord's will will regard his decree, will regard his authority, why can't we who have the capability to actually think? Yeah, all right. Why can't we regard the Lord's authority with such high regard ourselves? All right. We have his instructions. Yeah, yeah. We are supposed to be smart and wise. (laughs) Know everything. Yeah but we can't simply regard the Lord, his power, his authority, his instructions. In all of our supposed wisdom, we continue to defy the Lord's authority as if we have no fear of the consequences to the life that we live. What scares me even more is when the defiance is done knowingly. We have scripture, we have pastors, we have preachers, evangelists, deacons, mothers, 
the choir that sings, mm -hmm. and even you, the congregation of believers yeah. who go out into the world mm -hmm. doing as God has tasked us to do, doing what God has commissioned us to do, mm -hmm. to share his good news, his gospel, and it is spread through the world. Mm -hmm. We know of the Lord, mankind. There is no excuse anymore. All right. Everyone has heard of the Lord, mm -hmm. has heard of his instructions. And what do we do with it today? We mock it. We laugh at it. We say, well, he, he hasn't come back yet. Ha, 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 ha. Mm -hmm. This scares me. Mm -hmm. The blatant defiance yeah. that is done knowingly. Mm -hmm. Just as Judah knew better, there are so many of us that know better. All right. There are so many so-called believers mm -hmm. that are knowingly defying the Lord today in their hearts. There are so many so-called believers today that are knowingly defying the Lord's authority as well when we should know better. We often like to get on the non-believers and their defiance of the Lord. Yeah. But what about us? Yeah. What about we who are supposed to be the followers of Christ? What about us? I ask today, have we done just as Judah? All right. Have we developed a heart that is defiant? Mm -hmm. Have we developed a heart that is rebellious? Yeah, yeah. We'll see God speak to all that he had done for Judah. Mm -hmm. God tells us there in scripture that he had fed them to the full. All right. This means that they were well cared for. Mm -hmm. God was providing for them. God was pouring out his blessings yeah. onto them. Yeah. You see, I believe that the Lord still does this for mankind today. God, I believe, I believe he feeds us to the fool. Yes, all right. And I believe that he does this in the same manner that he did for Judah. I believe that the Lord does this diligently for us. Mm -hmm. And again, when I say that the Lord feeds us to our fool, I don't want you to be thinking about physical food here. All right. God blesses you every single day yeah. around the clock. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord blesses us. Mm -hmm. And he does so, so regularly yes. that so many people start overlooking mm -hmm. the blessings that come from the Lord. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They take God for granted. Wow. Yes, sir. Did wow. Judah give thanks and appreciation to the Lord? Mm -hmm. Do we give thanks and appreciation to the Lord for all that he does for us today? Wow. We'll see the answer to the question for Judah here in scripture. Mm -hmm. We'll see there in the seventh verse, God tells us that Judah committed adultery against him. Yeah. They were supposed to be in fellowship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just as we, who are Christians today, we are supposed yeah. to be in fellowship with the Lord, meaning we have a relationship with God. But the Lord said of Judah at that time, mm -hmm. they were committing adultery against him. He specifically says there that Judah assembled themselves by troops in the Hollis's houses. Yeah. This means that they were given adulation. They were coming together, giving adulation, giving praise to other gods. Yeah. Yeah. They were taking the Lord's providence. They were taking the Lord's care. They were taking it all for granted. And yeah, I tell you that this is something that makes me wonder about us today all right. because we do the same exact thing. Yeah. Yeah. Who are we praising for the blessings that God pours out unto us today? Are we committing adultery in our relationship, in our fellowship with the Lord? Who are we praising today? Yeah, yeah. 
Are we giving our praise to someone or to something else? Right. Are we taking God for granted? Are you taking God for granted today? That's the question, son. Go ahead. Now, what's even worse here that we'll see in scripture mm -hmm. is that after all that the Lord had been doing for them and caring for them, oh. we'll see that God says that they were speaking against. We'll see that God said that they were lying about him. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Judah was saying that it was not God mm -hmm. who was providing for them. Judah was not saying that it was God who was blessing them. You'll see that there in the 12th verse, if you're still following along with me. I want you to notice there in the 13th verse as well, that something was happening. When Judah was going about lying and saying that it is not God, we'll see that in the 13th verse. All right. We'll see that the prophets were not saying anything against what those people were saying. The prophets, they're supposed to be spiritual leaders. The prophets were not saying anything against their defiant actions. All right. They was just letting it go. Let it go, my Lord. Again, to what God was saying there, because this is the Lord pointing these things out in this passage of scripture. Yeah, yeah. I believe that all of this is still happening a very great deal in our world today mm -hmm. between both the so-called believer and the non-believer as well. Mm -hmm. The Lord regularly blesses us with so few of us giving him credit, with so few of us giving him thanks, with so few of us giving him appreciation for all that he has done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, granted, there is a lot of work that we do ourselves, but let's remember that it is God who gives us all of these opportunities. Mm -hmm. It is God who makes all these opportunities that you and I have. It is him who makes these things possible for us. All right. Yeah. When it is all about what we have done rather than what God has done for us, when it is about what we have did ourselves rather than God blessing us, then we are being just as defiant and rebellious as the people of Judah. Wow. The highest form of acknowledgement and recognition of the Lord is our praise and is our worship, our thanksgiving of him. Yeah, yeah. You see, we praise and we worship the Lord today, not because we feel it is a requirement, but because we are moved in our spirit to do so. Yeah, my Lord. You see, we do not praise and we do not worship the Lord today because we feel it is a requirement, but because it is a sign of our gratitude. It is a sign of our appreciation for all that the Lord has done for each and every last one of us. Yeah, yeah. I tell you today that I worship the Lord because I recognize mm -hmm that I would not be where I am today if it had not been for the Lord on my side throughout my life. Where would you be if God was not on your side? You see, I fear the Lord in that I, it absolutely terrifies me to think about where I would be without him. I'm God fearing in that manner. Yeah. Are you yeah. God fearing in that same manner? Mm -hmm. You see, Judah in that day had no such appreciation for the Lord or, f or fear mm -hmm. for where they could be without him in their lives. Mm -hmm. You see, I feel that when we hold the Lord in such a low regard as Judah was doing, mm 
When we do not appreciate all that he does for us, when we do not acknowledge his power, when we do not acknowledge his authority, when we do not acknowledge his instructions, Mm -hmm. I believe that we are taking God for granted. Mm. Where would you be Mm. without the Lord and his instructions for you? Mm. Where would you be without God providing? Mm -hmm. Where would you be without God caring for you around the clock, making sure that your spirit is fed to the full? Where would you be today? Do you fear where you would be without the Lord on your side today? See, we should not, nor can we not hold the Lord in such a low regard to where we commit adultery against him. And then begin to speak against him as Judah was. There are so many eyes in this world. What I mean by that is that there are so many I did this, I did that, I accomplished this, I did these things by myself. Yeah, yeah. Speaking against the Lord and holding him in low regard. We'll see there in the 14th verse that for their defiant and rebellious hearts, we'll see that the Lord said to Judah, behold, I will make my words in your mouth fire and this people would, and it shall devour them. That is what the Lord said. Now in Matthew's gospel, Jesus, he spoke of a sin that was unpardonable. Meaning a sin that the Lord would not pardon, that he would not forgive. Mm -hmm. Now look at this. In the 12th chapter of Matthew's gospel, if you want to see it for yourself in the 31st and the 32nd verse. Mm -hmm. That's again, the 12th chapter of Matthew's gospel, the 31st and the 32nd verse. Mm -hmm. We'll see that Jesus, he spoke of this unpardonable sin. Jesus said, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men but the blasphemy against the spirit Mm -hmm. will not be forgiven men, Jesus said. He then said, anyone who speaks a word against the son of man, it will be forgiven him. But then I want you to notice this part here. Mm -hmm. Underline, highlight this part in your Bible. Circle it, draw attention to it. Jesus said, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, it will not be forgiven him either in this age or in the age to come. That's right. Wow. Speaking against the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. The Holy Spirit is always at work. Wow. The Holy Spirit is the Lord, our God. Mm-hmm. Speaking against the works of God. Yeah. Yeah. That's to be speaking against the Lord himself. Yeah. Defiant and rebellious. Mm-hmm. Jesus said that that will not be pardoned. That's right. Is what he said there. As we have seen today, Judah was working in total defiance against the Lord and they had no fear of the consequences in doing so. This defiance, I want you to understand, was unpardonable. We'll even see the Lord ask the question there in the seventh verse in the fifth chapter of Jeremiah. The Lord asked, how shall I pardon you for this? God was not, and God does not forgive those that defy him in this manner. Those that work against the Lord, those that speak against him, those that do not fear him, in other words, will one day be devoured because of their words, Mm -hmm. because of their actions as well, because they did not fear the Lord enough to work to please him, to work not to upset him, Mm -hmm. to work to not be in opposition against him. 
You see, mm -hmm. we should acknowledge, we should recognize, and then we should appreciate all that the Lord does for us. Mm -hmm. We should do this on a daily basis. Yeah. We saw last week that we should work to please the Lord. Mm -hmm. Today, I tell you that, again, we should acknowledge, we should recognize, and we should appreciate all that the Lord does for us. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah, he also wrote in the book of Lamentations, mm -hmm. which was written after Judah, was punished for their sins after they were conquered by the Babylonians. Mm -hmm. He wrote, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah said, they, his compassions and mercies are new every morning. Mm -hmm. Great is your, the your being the Lord, great is your faithfulness. Mm -hmm. The Lord, Jeremiah said, is my portion, mm -hmm. says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah was a man that had gone through some things. Yes. He was a man that had witnessed and had seen some things. Yes. Yes. But I want you to understand that the words that Jeremiah spoke there in the third chapter of Lamentations mm -hmm are the words of a God-fearing man of faith in the Lord. Mm -hmm. He truly acknowledged, he truly recognized, he truly appreciated all the works of the Lord and did not take God for granted. Wow. Yeah. I ask all of you today again, mm -hmm. do you appreciate all the works oh, yeah. of the Lord? Yeah. Yeah. Do you appreciate all that God has done for you? We have our good days and yes, we have our bad days as well. But God brings us through, doesn't he? We don't do that by our own might. We don't accomplish anything by our own might. God is the one who brings us through. Through his might and through his power, we are blessed do you appreciate all that the Lord has done for you? Do you appreciate all the works of God today? I certainly hope so. Yeah. As David often wrote of the Lord in song, David will often say, marvelous are your works. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that God's works are marvelous today or do you yeah. take them for granted? Yeah. If you are not doing so already, mm -hmm. I tell you today, let us take time to appreciate all the marvelous works of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Let us take time to appreciate all that the Lord does for us mm -hmm. and all that the Lord does for those who are around us as well. Yeah, yeah. Let us do this as well today. Mm -hmm. Let us stop taking God for granted. Mm -hmm. Let us stop taking the Lord our God for granted. <laughs> oh yeah. Consider what he said he was going to do to Judah and stop taking God, his instructions and his blessings. Stop taking it for granted. Stop taking him for granted. Consider this again for a moment today as I close. Where would you be without the Lord by your side? Where would you be? Amen. 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 Amen.